Welcome to St. John Hughes on this the second Sunday of Easter. Please stand and join us in singing our opening song, All the Ends of the Earth. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to you all as we celebrate this Sunday, also called Divine Mercy Sunday. So I welcome you as we look for, we look for God's presence in our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. Let's take our quiet moment, ask the good Lord to forgive us for any sins. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And because we're in the Easter season, when it's a time of baptism for new converts, we're reminded of our own, and we will sprinkle you with holy water during the Gloria. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest heaven. Peace to people all over the world. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest heaven. Peace to people all over the
Let us bow our heads in prayer. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that we all may grasp and rightly understand in what font we have been washed, by whose spirit we have been reborn, by whose blood we have been redeemed, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. 
The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive will be forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. He said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring my, your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a great opening line that I love in the musical, The Man of La Mancha. And it, they made a movie of it, and I saw the play 30, 40 years ago. I had the CD for a long time. But the opening line I love is when Don Quixote says, Come, enter into my imagination. And then, of course, he's charging windmill, windmills, and he lives with his feet three feet off the ground, you know. It's a fun story. The, the, what was the big song, The Impossible Dream, that we all love. So this sermon I'm starting off with, Come, enter into my childhood. And I'd like to go back to around the mid-50s when I was in Ireland, and I was in grammar school. We called it primary school. And my older brother, 
he got old enough and he moved from the primary school to high school they call secondary school. And he had a class in secondary school that we never had in primary school. And the class was called science. And it got my brother totally hooked. He had a mind for science. And one day he came home and my dad was a bit of a math geek. And my brother said, you know, the teacher said that in a cubic foot, that's a box, you know, a foot long, foot wide, and a foot high. In a cubic foot, it will hold 6.228 gallons. Now, in the 50s, these are imperial gallons, 20% bigger approximately than American gallons. In American gallons, it would be nearly seven and a half, 7.48 gallons. Anyway, my brother said to my dad, that's not true, is it? You can't get all those gallons into a cubic foot. My dad said, we have a biscuit tin. We, you call them cookies here, we call them biscuits. And it was a cubic foot, and it was made out of metal. So my dad said to my brother, take out the cooked biscuits for a while, and go into the kitchen, get the measuring cup, and check it out. My brother came back, and his jaw had dropped. It was exactly 6.228 imperial gallons. My brother went from doubt to questioning to truth. We have the most famous doubter in history in today's gospel, Thomas. In fact, if ever you say, doubting Thomas, if you doubted something, someone might have said to you, you're a doubting Thomas. And just because Thomas doubted, we admire my brother for doubting and checking it out, just because Thomas doubted, we find a way to criticize that he doubted. And when you think about it, what did Thomas do? Thomas went from doubting to questioning. I need to touch Jesus if he's risen. If he's back in this world, I need to see the wounds, put my hand in his side where the Roman soldier speared him. I want to see where the nails went and touch that. Thomas went from doubting to questioning to truth and faith. In our lives, doubting is not bad. I hear things on the news sometimes, depending on every channel. And I say, can that be true? Can that be true? And I think we should question some things we hear on the news. And we can go from doubting, from doubting to questioning, and then finding the truth. And it happens in our lives. You know, I'll give a sermon today, and as you're leaving in the parking lot, you know, I doubt if he said what, what he said is true. There aren't 7.48 gallons in a cubic foot. <laughs> go home and check it out. <laughs> but we go for, to doubting very often. Sometimes in a marriage, the couples may have a fleeting doubt of the fidelity of the other. And that happens in friendship. When your kid learns how to drive, do you have full trust in your kid immediately? No, you're there breathing hard, your heart is beating, your eyes are wide open, and you're just hoping to God the kid can do this. We doubt instead of having faith. And this doubting Thomas and the disciples, what happened to them all? Of course Jesus came back, and then Thomas gave us one of the most beautiful prayers ever. Just five words. He said to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Most Sundays we say a creed, the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed, with an awful lot of words. But Thomas put it together. He said to Jesus, you're my Lord and my God. People when, will often tell you in spiritual books, during the consecration, when the priest lifts up the host and the chalice, that's a perfect prayer to say, my Lord and my God. And so they met Jesus. He came back a second time because he was going to show Thomas. 
And there's something very interesting about that visit. Uh, Jesus said to them three times, peace be with you. Three times in this scripture reading today, peace be with you. Now Jesus had been crucified, arrested, tortured, and the apostles had all run away except for John. And Jesus was there with them in a locked room where they were scared. And if he were like many of us, myself included, he might have said, hey guys, I'm back. And I have miracles to work. And you all owe me an apology. After what you did running away from the cross, you guys owe me. And it better be sincere, because I'm not going to make up until you apologize. He didn't say that. He said, peace be with you. When our ego gets very big, we say things like that, don't we? He or she did this to me. I'm not talking to her until I get a sincere apology. Jesus could have asked for an apology. Instead, he gives us a different model. And I'm toying with the fact, could we follow that model when we're hurt by somebody, when we're abandoned, when people run away in our hour of need? Could we say, peace be with you? The disciples, they all became people of great faith. Every one of them, except John, who wrote this gospel, died for their faith. Some in horrible ways. Peter crucified upside down and all sorts of stories. And they got faith. So I'm throwing out a question to you, and there's many answers to this question, and I've heard many answers. But during the week, I heard one I'd never heard before. And the question is, what is the opposite of faith? Jesus said to Thomas in that gospel, do not have unbelief, but belief. And unbelief is the opposite of faith. But other people come up with more intriguing, insightful answers. What's the opposite of faith? And the new answer for me this week is control. Control. Back to your kid driving you for the first time at 16 years old. You don't have control. You want control. You don't have faith. You might even reach over and try and take control back. Is faith a level of trust and love? You know, controlling other people, being passive-aggressive, or a whole host of other ways, bribing people, is some of the terrible things we do to each other that do not help our relationships and do not help us to grow in friendship and love for each other. And all those forms of control, maybe if this author is on to something saying control is the opposite of faith. Maybe if we begin to let go of some of our controlling instincts, we'll develop greater faith. The apostles did. They left the locked room. They went out and started preaching, Jesus has risen. This whole gospel I find quite challenging. I think it's okay to doubt. And in this translation, Jesus didn't knock Thomas as a doubter, as one having unbelief is the word chosen. I think it's okay to doubt about a lot of things. But I think we also need to question and follow through and see if our doubts have a validity or not. I think this gospel also says, you know, we demand apologies. Do we have to? Can we not be peacemakers? Most of all, I think the gospel calls us to have faith because blessed are they who have not seen us and have believed. That's us.
We skip the creed today and we have the baptismal promises. Please stand. Do you reject Satan and all his works? Do you reject sin in all its forms? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered and died for us, and rose from the dead? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We're proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. We now have our petitions. So we come to our God with our needs, our prayers, our wants, and we place them before him. For the church, oh. for the church that through the inspiration and guidance of the Holy Spirit, we may grow in our trust of the risen Jesus who offers forgiveness and hope for the future. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government leaders and civil authorities, that the Holy Spirit may guide them in their decision-making and that hatred, violence, and conflicts may cease, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our neophytes, those newly joined to Christ through baptism, those called to him through the sacraments of initiation, may their witness of new life in God bring fresh enthusiasm and joy to every Christian. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that we who have received Christ's mercy and forgiveness in our lives may in turn be merciful and forgiving towards others. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle with their faith, may, be, may they be inspired by St. Thomas's doubts and subsequent faith in the risen Lord. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound, and for all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit, including Jaden Nitskiff, Diane McNall, and D Dan Young, that the risen Lord may dispel their darkness for those gone before us in death, including Victoria Asnushian, Alexander Raham, Jesus Amador Lazarus, Anna Maria Polito, and Carlos Montana, and that they, they and all sleep in Christ may enjoy light, happiness, and peace. We pray. We pray to hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, for the souls of David Vitali and Theodore Cruz and Florence Fowler, for the special intentions of Monique Noel, for our own needs and intentions that we now recall in silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, you are the source of life and you've sent your son into the world that we may have that life in abundance. Help us to live so that we may come to the abundance of that life in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please join us in our song for the presentation of the gifts, Ozana.
my sisters and brothers. Pray that our gifts may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people, and renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, we may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but at this time to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death alone and, and profess your resurrection, resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope and Jose our Bishop and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, 
and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, our mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. In the words Jesus taught us, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with each one of you. And now we get to use Jesus' greeting again, especially to anyone who might be with us who has disappointed us. Let's say, peace be with you. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away our sins and the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to this supper. Lord, I am not worthy. Join us in our communion song, How Great Is Our God.
just a few announcements. There was a clothing and food drive today and the Vincent de Paul truck took away a lot of stuff. And if ever you want stuff, you want to get donate, call St. Vincent de Paul. That's the Catholic organization that will send a truck for you. The quarterly blood drive is coming up on Sunday, April 14, from 8 to 2. Of course, they prefer if you will sign up and say you're coming, but you can also do a walk-in, but they like to know how many are coming. It will be over in Montal Hall. School gala on April 20th at Castaways in Burbank. If you want to support Catholic school, there'll be dancing, dinner, casino tables, an open bar, and more. Tickets are selling fast. Visit the table in the plaza for more information. And that's on April 20. If I said to you, 420, how many of you know that's code for something? How come very few of you are laughing? It's my birthday too, but it's not because of my birthday. For those of you who don't know, it's, it's a kind of a, not secret, but a code for marijuana. English as a second language has been taught every Saturday from 9 a.m. to noon in Grill Hall. And there's three levels of proficiency. It's free except you buy the textbook. And in fact, the men's council are subsidizing that. So if you know anyone who would like to be part of ESL, English as a second language program, tell them about it. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless each one of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Great to see you all tonight, especially the Confirmation One students that are, lots of you are in church today. Good to see you. Our Mass is now ended. Let's sing our song and go in peace. Thanks be to God. And please join us in our closing song, Resucito.